A huge welcome back to the channel and remember to stay active as we give away a free game each month. This month we have another copy of Guns Gore on Kenobi 2, thanks to the developer for the review codes. Whimsical and charming are terms we don't often hear in gaming. The film industry has it dialed, with the likes of Up from Pixar being a fine example of the type of atmosphere The Garden Between Us attempts to create. With a unique time shift mechanic, as beautiful to look at as it is simple to control, I was immediately intrigued with the concept. What makes this game stand out from a packed Switch lineup, and is that price just a little too steep? Let's find out. The game features several dreamlike scenarios which once completed offer snippets of a forgotten childhood, of growing up and friendship. Each one seemed to strike a chord with me, as if the story being told was actually my own, from adventures setting up our first outdoor paddling pool, or water fights with the hose, to the videotapes and static on a huge old CRT TV screen. Every memory is designed to evoke a sense of childhood awe and wonder, and the backdrop of the stars and constellations created with the memories you unlock are mesmerizing. Although not a traditional story per se, the way your character's journeys unfold with each island offering another dreamlike glimpse of the inevitable path to adulthood was totally captivating for me. I literally sat here tonight constantly saying to my wife, oh my goodness, this game's lovely. And that really is the most eloquent way I can describe it. The game just made me happy. Just catching a glimpse of them holding hands when ascending the hill on the first island I knew this was a little different, perhaps even special. Now while the story isn't going to be perfectly told for everyone, and there is a vagueness to it, for me story scores 17 out of 20. The developers aim to make the controls as simple as possible. With the analog stick, you can control the flow of time. Right to go forward in time, and left to go back. The characters move autonomously, but you can grab objects as you pass by them. Lanterns with the girl, which will need to be lit to achieve various things, and the boy can interact with a few different items. These allow time to be moved while you remain stationary, and this is where the game begins to get much deeper than I thought possible with just three buttons used. Initially, the puzzles are easy and you simply move forward and backwards in time, enough to get your lit lantern to the top of the island where you both slam it home and watch the memory of this place play out. When you advance to the further stages, however, simplicity is underpinned by a complexity that could only be delivered in a world so detailed and beautiful. Take this moment where you must manipulate a 2D retro game to have your lamp lit then retrieve it in 3D. The only time I've seen anything remotely this cool was in the last Mario. Moments like these aren't fleeting either. Every single level is so very detailed and so carefully crafted as to immerse you completely from beginning to end. It seems strange to me to be enjoying the control so much in a game that essentially offers you no real control over the movement of the characters directly, but that is exactly how I feel about them. This is a title to unwind with and the systems in place offer enough challenge for even veteran puzzlers to spend a few moments. Every game has its flaws and here was my biggest gripe. In trickier levels, you may have to rewind to go back many times. The speed for me just was sometimes too slow. Watching your character moonwalk backwards through the same sequence time and time again can become a real pain. I would have liked a variable rewind speed to reduce this, but I think this may have made the game a real breeze to blast through. Who knows, but the option would have alleviated this completely. Still, overall I absolutely adored the gameplay. Honestly, it's a special one. Many of you might say, ah, this just isn't really my type of game, which we hear a lot in the comments. And to be honest, I thought the same. It's just something totally unique, both in the way it controls and plays. Now, some may find the controls too simple, but for me, it's spot on. I'll allow a couple of points, just because I know that some of you won't feel the same, but make no mistake, they work incredibly well indeed. It is both simple and complex, and offers enough challenge to keep you totally engrossed. While some may regard gameplay as too simple as well, when you have progressed into the mid to end stages, it offers a very good challenge. Repetition can be an issue at points, but overall, gameplay scores 18 out of 20. Visually, the game looks absolutely beautiful and has some very complex physical systems in place behind it. 
It's a very clever technical achievement. Take this moment where I manipulated the environment which meant that this cloth was held up so I could reach the button underneath. or these dominoes falling with perfect physicality, it all just feels so right. The aesthetic is entirely clutter-free. Text, speech, and a complex UI here you shall not find. Instead, all the superfluous nonsense is stripped away, leaving a vibrant world to explore. It is rare that I am racking my brains for negative things to say, but this is tough. The items within the levels are well modelled and evoke memories of their own. The little references to objects some will not even be able to identify these days, while many of the islands will evoke shared experience. I just thought the attention to detail was spot on. Overall visual score 17 out of 20. The soundtrack by Tim Scheel is equally good, with a delicate and emotive feel that punctuates the experience in a subtle way. Nothing about this game is heavy-handed, quite the opposite, and the same goes for audio and sound. Delicate is the best way I can use to describe it. Sound effects are good, and there is a very small amount of HD rumble, just enough, which just ties in so well as to be almost imperceptible. Overall, I would give audio 18 out of 20. The game retails at £17.99 or $19.99 and this for me is the biggest contention. At only two to four hours long, many people may just outright say, nope, not at that price. That would be a major loss for both gamer and the game itself. The experience is nothing like I've played before. But the price for me just isn't right. I've reviewed enough titles to be able to gauge what will sell. If you're listening developers, whack this on sale for maybe £11.99 or $13.99 or thereabouts and thank me later. I know your game is excellent and well worth the money but people will judge it by its peers and on the eShop there are some incredible games at very low prices. Overall for me, value is going to have to score 13 out of 20. Now this is a fantastic experiential game, the time manipulation doesn't feel like a gimmick and although so simple, allows for some truly ingenious puzzles that make you feel smart when you crack them. The Gardens Between scores 83%, it's a definite purchase, there's no doubt about it, perhaps on sale if the price isn't right for you. Thanks so much for watching the review, I hope you enjoyed it, please let me know down below, it means a lot when we get these comments and actually makes the whole thing worthwhile. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. See ya! Hey, that was a good one.